Hey guys, GuyCrusher9 here with Let's Play Pokemon Crystal. In the last episode, we finally met up with Jasmine, but she needs medicine, so we can't really do anything here in Olivine. So we're now gonna go across the sea in Route 40. So yeah, this is the first of the uh, sea routes in uh, the Johto region, rather. Um, let's see. Sea routes are kind of interesting in this game. Like, they're basically, um, they, there is an island system out there, too. And, um, it's a lot bigger than the last one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm probably expecting all my time to be spent here. Can I just go up in this thing already? Because I know in Hercule and Soul Server, they lock this thing down until you beat the Elite Four. See, if you want to win a whole lot, you can win special gifts, alright. I guess I can access this place, huh? How about that? Or maybe if I go inside the tower, they're gonna say, yeah, it's not open yet, I don't know. Well, in any case, I'm probably- I'm not gonna be showing off now because I hadn't planned on showing this off. Didn't even, didn't even realize this was here. I, I should've, though, because that was one of the additions in Crystal. But yeah, we're gonna focus upon basically going, you know, across the water. Well, you can see from here, Cyanwood is across the sea. And she kinda gives us a hint of, um, what the next town is gonna be, which is Cyanwood City. Which is, honestly, a unique town in its own right, too, because it kinda is like Cinnabar, only it doesn't have that little loop around back to your first town. Although that would be pretty interesting, surfing along the entire coast of uh, Johto to get all the way back to New Bark Town. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, we're Simon, and he's gonna have a tentacool. Get used to seeing this Pokemon a lot during this trip, um, if you're, you know, playing in Gold, Silver, Crystal. Because, um, yeah, I mean, the two infinite things that you can know about Pokemon are the number of Zubats in Dark Caves, and the number of Tentacles on Oceans. And yeah, we're gonna be fighting a few of them, although... Ideally, well, I don't know, I'm tempted to start using uh, Repels for this, because I have a feeling, knowing my luck, I'm gonna start be, you know, going like, every... I'm gonna hit like a Pokemon every three seconds. But, um, yeah, the trainers are gonna have um, a predominantly Water-type Pokemon, well, pretty much exclusively Water-type Pokemon. I mean, that's the only type swimmers typically have. Of course, there are subtypes that they have to be aware of, like Tentacles Poison type. And yeah, yeah, that's kind of why I'm using Guitar right now. It's a good idea to have an Electric and a Grass type Pokemon with you, just so you can handle both worlds. Oh come on! This is this is the first trainer, and I'm already having to go back. Ah. Well, this kind of gives you a showing of how this. Surfing ride is gonna be. Ugh. All right. Well, I guess I'll go back real quick and um, heal up. Okay. Now that I've gotten back, I'm actually I actually went ahead and bought a couple of super repels when I was um, taking a trip over to the Pokemart. So now we, we can use some of those uh, super repels. Of course, the second level of repel beyond the first one. I think the first one only did 100 steps. I can't remember offhand. But the Super Repel does 200, so... That should last us for quite a bit of time. Although I, I expect to use at least two or three. But anyways, here we go for a second swimmer. She has a Staryu. Which doesn't have a subtype, but it is pretty cool with the animations. And while I'm messing around, just uh, shocking it to death. I'm putting Guitar out in front because I wanted to put in the lead. Because um, a lot of the Pokemon that I'm going to be fighting in this row are going to be predominantly ones that aren't poison types, so uh, Subaki can handle them. So Subaki's going to get a lot of experience in this place. So yeah, there you go. And um, I, have a, I have a specific path I'm going to be going along. Uh, Subaki can handle this next guy, but um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to minimize the amount of steps I have to take through this place. Because, uh, I mean, this, this route, honestly, like, more so Route 30, I mean, 41, but this route can be huge. And yeah, just confirming Repel is 100 steps. Alright, I see Paula, she has a star you. Funny story about the name Paula. <laughs> yes, this is another uh, rare glimpse into Gaia's world. Uh, my, my father, um, apparently there's a thing in his family, well, with him anyways, that he likes to call, well, his name is Paul A, and then the last name. So, what will happen quite a few times when it comes to letters that are being addressed to him, and this happens at a frightfully uh, large frequency, too. 
But like every now and then we'll get a letter that's addressed to Miss Paula. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. <laughs> and I was uh, getting started to that one story because he named um he named like his uh, first son and then like my older brother Paul A. So yeah. Don't write your Pokemon. I wish you could swim. I mean, that's just one thing they never really addressed in the Pokemon game. I mean, you always have to surf on your Pokemon. Which in this game makes you look like a derpy Lapras. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it looks... I mean... I, I know comics have hit up on, on this already, but like... This is com completely ridiculous. I mean, I'm surfing on a... You know, a Chincho, and it magically turns into a Lapras. <laughs> It's like there's a Pokemon fusion at some point between the trainer and the Pokemon, and yeah. They don't really explain surfing battle very well, though. Especially when you're using the Pokemon that you're surfing on. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Go ahead and take Katara back out since, um, Tsubaki leveled up. Yeah, I, I, we're not going to be really facing too many new Pokemon. There's, I believe, like, two of the Johto Pokemon we'll be facing out here, but otherwise it's pretty much just Shelter, Staryu, Tentacool. I think there's a Seal. Oh, and this guy's a War Turtle, uh, turtle randomly. Am I... I was getting tongue-tied again. No, that was a weird animation. <laughs> I like War Turtle. War Turtle is pretty cool. The Squirtle line is pretty cool design-wise, I have to say. I mean, it, it, you can, they could have gotten a lot simpler, I suppose, with the turtle aspect, but... They did a good job with Squirtle. Granted, it's not really a starter I typically use, though. I mean, I, I typically favor Bulbasaur, if anything, and... Even Charizard a few times if I want to get through the game particularly fast. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Charizard is just so powerful in the first game, I have to say. Oh god, and he's a nightmare in Fire Red. I remember my first playthrough of Fire Red, I went with a Venusaur, um, ultimately, so my rival had a, um, a Charizard. And, like, the battle before the, um, the Elite Four, the champion battle, basically, the one where you find him on, um, the, the route leading to the League, like, his Charizard just, it would, it absolutely demolished both my Graveler and my Raichu, and I had to send out a third Pokemon to kill it. And when, like, when it came to the champion battle, I was like, I was honestly sweating buckets. Luckily that went a little better than that last battle, but I mean, Jesus. And I was about at level 2, if not, like, probably at most 5 levels ahead of him. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, this is crazy, like, once you get the third generation moves into the game, not to mention the abilities of the Pokemon and stuff like that. Although Charizard ability they really didn't help it up that much. It's like that kind of thing where like you your stat gets boosted like when you're under one third health or something. I never really found those abilities particularly useful. Like uh, abilities I tend to like include stuff like levitate, which like makes you immune to ground type attacks and stuff like that. And I'm getting lucky with the poison here. Normally I'd be poisoned like three times over by now. <laughs> and yeah, Butterfree's taking him out. I'm kind of giving Tsubaki and a, um, a Katara a break, mainly because I, like the number of Pokemon that I'm going to be fighting, like the number of trainer Pokemon I'm going to be fighting, is going to easily outlast the power points of both Spark and Razor Leaf, so I'm kind of being a little, you know, uh, what's the word? I don't know, I forget, but Conservationist. Oh, oh come on. Down in the middle of the ocean, too. Essentially. And of course he poisons me right now. That, that was the last... Or I think that was the last... No, there's one more. This guy has a full set. Man. This is probably like one of the few times where we have a trainer that actually has six Pokemon. And is either A, a rifle, or B, has all Mar Magikarp. Or one particular Pokemon that's completely useless. <laughs> And yeah, uh, looking at the the Ceramide card on this guy, this guy has a pretty complete team of water types, I have to say. Although he has a, three of his Pokemon are tentacle, though, so I don't, that doesn't really make much sense. I guess I'll be throwing Katara back out since I can't really deal with this. Yeah, assuming... Yeah, I was right. Yeah. Sometimes they mix up the order. Mainly I've seen this with gym leaders, though, but yeah. Alright, Katara, let's get a good shot, a spark off. Oh, nah! I, 
For some reason, I keep thinking that Spark is the second move. There, watch, he's gonna poison me. Oh, man, I guess the gods weren't... I guess the gods were merciful there. Alright. Well, thank, thanks for that, I suppose. I don't know why, I, I get surf confused with Spark so many damn times ever since I started training this damn Pokemon. Alright, but here's one of the uh, Jota Pokemon we'll be seeing, and one we haven't seen before. It's Remoraid, which is just, without, without a doubt, probably the oddest of the water-type Pokemon introduced in this generation, mainly because of its evolution. Uh, it's a straight-up water-type. Um, the only real move that it has that is kind of like a leg-up of everyone else is Lock-On, which basically uh, guarantees that the next attack that the Pokemon is going to give is, will connect, basically. Uh, never no return to it. I hope you drown, you poisoned my buttery. Alright. Oh good, I have antidotes. Thank you. Whew. Hopefully I don't get poisoned though, I only have one left. Well, I have four poison cure berries, so I guess I'm in good shape. Well, good enough shape. Alright, let's get Subaki out. And continue our adventures as Dorky Lapras. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, just the eyes just look so weird. <laughs> But, um, you know, I'm looking off of this, um, uh, yeah, again, I'm going off the survey thing, like, it's kind of a good idea to know what I'm, uh, fighting beforehand so I don't get screwed with, uh, the first Pokemon sent out. I'm noticing that all the female trainers, or, uh, I guess what I should say is all the male trainers are the ones that have po uh, water-type Pokemon that you wouldn't want to use a grass-type against, which is basically... If the Pokemon has either a poison subtype or an ice subtype, and there's like one example I think later on. I think. But um, yeah, basically all the uh, I mean the best way to say is that all the male trainers you want to use a electric type Pokemon to start, anyways. And then with all the female trainers, they're all gonna have like water uh, type Pokemon, so you just you can just stick a the grass type on them. So, it, so yeah, it's just something I noticed. Um, just, just like a couple of seconds ago, and um, so yeah, if you're going through this route, there's a very helpful thing to remember. This thing uses recover. It's a bitch. And I completely wasted its recover. <laughs> and Subak is already see. Yeah, your grass and water. Uh, I mean, your grass and electric type Pokemon are definitely going to get a lot of um, boosting up in this route. Which is kind of, uh, meh. Well, actually, it is kind of useful considering the, uh, one of the Pokemon that the next gym leader has, and still getting used to the fact that Surf is on there now. So it's now not the se uh, now Switch isn't the s Joey! No, I don't want to battle- I'm on the other side of Johto, you dumb- Ugh. Ah, alright, let's, let's just focus on and continue. Guy next, I guess. The waves are wild here. They tire you out while you swim. And uh, just to note, um, we can't actually access these um, islands yet because if you may have noticed already, there are a few whirlpools that are gu guarding the few entrances into them. And um, yeah, we need an HM in order to get that. And we won't be getting the HM for a bit of time. So don't worry about it now. Now watch Katara completely destroy these Gyarados because water and flying types do not mix well. <laughs> and that was another thing, I never really understood how Gyarados is a flying type. Uh, I don't know, it's just another one of those little nitpick things I have to say. I mean, if anything, like, Lance uses them, so it'd be, it would make more sense if they were water and dragon type. I mean, hell, they kind of look like those Chinese dragons that you see in the New Year's. That's probably where they got the idea from, to be honest. Eh, nah, Katara, Katara almost leveled up. Yeah, we don't care what you say. Alright, let's get uh, Subaki back out because the next trainer we're going to be fighting, I believe, is a female. If this map is right online. Yep, alright. The weather is so beautiful. I'm in a daze. Good, it'll be easier to take you out then. <laughs> and I have something like a dwarf right now. And Seal. Oh wait, Seal, that might be a problem. It might know Aurora Beam by now. Well, hopefully I can one-shot it. <laughs> Honestly, for the longest time, I thought Seal was always a, a, a dual Ice-type, but I think it gets the, um, 
ice type once it evolves into Dugong. Or I don't think it even gets it then. It's, it's weird. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that didn't last long. <laughs> Alright, Ball kind of looked at there, I suppose. Oh! <laughs> yeah, she's tripping balls right now. Okay, now, once again, we gotta put Katara back in front. <laughs> I keep having to switch between these two. Alright. See those islands that are blocked by whirlpools? There just has to be a secret. And there is, but again, we're not gonna be seeing it for a while. Alright, let's see what this guy has. One Pokemon, Burke. Burke, Burke. Oh, the Quillfish, the other Johto uh, fish Pokemon. This is the one, uh, this is the, that water type Pokemon that I was kind of referring to in, in the past, where it's one of those ones where it's a lot easier to find them in swarms, because if you try to hunt for them regularly, you're only going to find, like, the, uh, you're going to find them, like, a 1% chance. And damn, I wish this was a wild one, because then I could just catch it right now. Alright, and Water Gush should probably finish this guy off. So yeah, kind of a pathetic little footnote there. <laughs> Alright, level 27. Going along nicely. Like, what's the secret to your strength? Well, I train it. Oh! Oh, wait a minute, Chinchilla evolves at 27? Huh. I could have sworn it was 32. I don't know why. But, um, yeah. There we go. Unexpected evolution time! <laughs> But yeah, um, Chincho just evolved into Lantern, its final form of, um, well, the game. And, um, oh wow, it's broken 100 HP. That's pretty interesting. Uh, and I'm already surfing, alright. Uh, just want to show this off real quick, since I kind of like showing off of all Pokemon. Still in the Water Electric type, its, its stats are basically a little bit more heightened, but it, it still it follows the same thing. High, well, high Earth special stats, and then nice speed, and then the lower, um, attack and defense stats. And of course, the other really good thing about um, the Chincho line is that they're very HP heavy too, compared to other Pokemon, so. Like, it's the first, as you can see, it's the first Pokemon that's broken 100 HP, so. It's gonna be getting a bit more. It's, again, it's nowhere near like, say, Weekly Tough or Chansey or anything like that, but it's still gonna be a, a foot above the other Pokemon that we have. Or I have, rather. <laughs> and random side up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if obviously uh, both Tsubaki and Katara hit um, level 28. Which would actually be right where I need them. Like, I'm. Uh, training is so bothersome at this point in the game. And I'm probably gonna have to go. I'm gonna probably have to surf all the way back to Olivine City in order to train Pokemon like Nova and Elica. Just because. <laughs> well, hell, training. I hope Tsubaki. Yeah, Tsubaki should get to level 28. Which is good, because training a Grass-type Pokemon would be a bit of an issue, because I, I would have to use the Good Rod if I wanted to fight Water-type Pokemon like that, or, or like I needed to. Oh my, we're at the World Islands. You're already here! Yep. <sighs> Brain is exploding. It's kind of humorous how these uh, changes kind of look like the green-haired Misty. Alright, she's got Goldeen. Alright, this... Well, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I mean, Goldeen's gonna know Peck. Which is, um... Well, it, it makes sense because of its horn thing, but, um... I mean, it shouldn't be doing too much damage because, um... You know, it doesn't have the same type advantage, so... And there we go, Subaki's already leveled up. <laughs> Alright, well, that's that training dealt with. And he's gonna send out the Goldeen. Yeah, I'm just gonna finish this up with Tsubaki. It'll probably be the f fastest. Not to mention that a few of the other trainers are gonna be, um, you know, ones where I'm gonna need Katara anyways. Alright, and your next Pokemon is Sea King, the, the evolved form of Goldeen. A pretty impressive Pokemon, I have to say. It, it definitely shows up the model of the goldfish that they were going for. And to be honest, this pose kind of reminds you of Lumion from the fourth generation. Like, or at least with its, uh, rear, um, its tail fin. And I'm surprised that didn't do more. Alright, Tackle should probably kill this thing. Alright, now we're done with that. K 
Kaylee was defeated. Is that how you do it? Yeah. I don't know how we arrived at that question, but alright. Yeah, uh, if... I, I have to apologize if I am being a little bit confusing with my route here. I'm making sure I'm killing... Well, not killing. Defeating all the trainers. Why, why am I always going so violently? But, um... The water's loose here. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, there are a lot of trainers in this route. And I'm making sure I'm getting all of them. Um, I'm getting these top ones. I I'm kind of going in like a loop. I'm looping around the first island. Like, went through the middle and then went up. And then I'm going to be going straight back down... Because this is actually the last of the northern trainers, so we don't really have to stay up this far north. Luckily, the other two trainers are going to be um, right below the lower left island. So that's kind of why I didn't go around the, the lower right island, because there wasn't any need. Well, they barely afford you any room down there, honestly. I look at this map. <laughs> It's kind of interesting just seeing like uh, the graph, uh, like the map changes between gold, silver, and then crystal. But um, oh shoot, this guy has a tentacle. Rule. Well, I should be getting close to level 28 now. <laughs> but yeah, tentacle, the evolved form of uh, tentacle. I, yeah. I don't know. I kind of always liked this Pokemon after the um, that one anime uh, episode that they had. With I believe I, I believe that was the one that they got horsey from. Or Misty got horsey from, but um, although that tentacle is huge, so like it, <laughs> this icon doesn't really give it much justice, I have to say. I'm tempted to try it one day, honestly. I don't know, but mm, it's just kind of one of those interesting things. Yikes! I've got prune skin. Well, you've been soaking in your well. No, that wouldn't make much sense. <laughs> and honestly, I'm kind of shocked that my repel is still going. I honestly thought it'd run out by now. Alright, alright, I found that trainer, alright. Alright, here's the last, uh, first of the last trainers. Um, uh, yeah, just making sure that this is the, um, the most rightward one. So all we have to do go now is go left and we'll eventually hit the city. This means we'll be finally done is looking at the timer for this, um, I mean, I'm probably gonna have to cut off a, a minute or two for the, uh, going back to the, um, what's it, Pokemon Center and then buying the repels, but... Yeah, I mean... In the past of the project, I have to say the reason why I'm probably this high up of a number already is because I've been trying to reserve myself from making very long videos. Like, honestly, my uh, my um, sentiment is going to be if it exceeds 26 minutes, um, then I, I consider cutting it up into two, uh, two separate videos. Um, this one, I'm not sure. I mean, oh, and Repel finally wears off. I'm not going to take the chance, though. I don't have a regular Repel, so I'm just going to waste another Super Repel. I'm not going to take the chance, though, because, again, with my luck with, uh, surfing, odds are I'm going to run across, like, again, Pokemon, like, every three seconds. <laughs> Alright, at night, nice star you gather near the water's surface. And that actually kind of gives you a hint of how you need to catch the star you, because they only po I believe they only pop up during the night when you fish. So, yeah, a, a helpful hint right there. And horsey. So that's pretty much... That's pretty much most, if not all, the Generation 1 water types. Well, some, you know, representation of them anyways. And once again, I choose the wrong thing attack. And it didn't matter, because apparently I have a high enough special attack now. <laughs> uh, again, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, the sparks, sir. Let's see, this... Alright, she has another host yeah. I am tempted, since I didn't level up, to hit it with another Surf, but I'm just gonna go safe and hit it with a Spark. And, uh, what was I before? I forget. <laughs> but, um... Oh yeah, yeah, the time limit things. But yeah, basically, um... This might turn out to be a 25-minute video if it's not the, um... 26 mark because I, I, I'm already past it. But I don't know how many, uh, how much time I'm going to be cutting off just because. But here we are. We have finally arrived at Simewood City, the fifth gym town or city rather. And uh, this is the wrong sign. This is the pharmacy. We don't want the pharmacy. We want the town. Uh, we want the city. Why do I keep saying town? <sighs> None of these cities look like cities except for the Goldenrod. All right, Simewood City. A port sounded surrounded by rust seas. That's not really a good way to advertise yourself. Alright. 
But anyways, uh, just uh, for the sake of time, this is Gany Christian 9 with Let's Play Pokemon Crystal. Uh, we've officially made the Cyanwood City. We've gone past the uh, water routes of this region. And in the next episode, we'll be doing some fooling around here. And possibly the gym leader if I get through things fast enough. So I'll see you then, guys.